Okay guys, it's Stephanie and I'm here to finally do my Q&A video. Um, I put out the video asking for questions like almost a month ago. I realized that. I just got really sick. Um, I couldn't talk and then I had this bad cough and then my family came over and you know, just life happens. So I am here doing it now. Um, so this was for reaching a thousand subscribers, which I still think is crazy. And I'm so grateful that people really take the time to watch these videos. Anyway, I got a lot of really great questions and all the comments were so sweet and they just really made my day. So thank you all for taking the time to congratulate me and ask me questions. I loved reading through all of these and I'm really looking forward to answering them. Um, so without further ado, here are some of my answers to your questions question I'm going to answer is from Christy over at One Book More and she asks what was the first horror movie you watched and how old were you when you watched it? Now I was staying at my cousin's house I think I was like seven or eight and they were babysitting um, while my parents were out on a date or something and I remember they were watching the fourth Nightmare on Elm Street movie and I remember because ever since watching like right after I watched that movie I was really traumatized I think as most young children are from watching horror movies at too early an age and I was really scared of waterbeds um, because there's a scene where like somebody gets trapped like inside their waterbed which was not a scene that an eight-year-old should watch for a lot of reasons um so yeah that was not the movie that like turned me on to horror um it really like creeped me out and it was such a weird movie um, but to this day, like, it's my favorite horror movie franchise. And I think it's like weirdness and corniness is totally part of that. But that was the first movie I watched. I would not say it was the first horror movie I loved, but it was definitely like the first one I was exposed to. And her second question is, do you have any favorite read aloud books? Um, and then she said like, she's reading Pippi Longstocking to her kids. So I'm thinking they're a little older than Henry is. So my son is two and right now we're going through a really huge Eric Carle phase. Like everything. Eric Carle, baby bear, polar bear, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Like these are his favorite things in the world. He's all about Eric Carle. I think he really likes the artwork and it's simple enough. And then his other favorite is if you give a mouse a cookie. Um, I know when I found out I was pregnant, I, I went out and bought read aloud books that he's not going to be able to understand for like a few more years. But I bought all of the Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing series by Judy Bloom because I remember I really loved those books when I was little. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to when he's old enough that that can be our thing where we can go through those books and read aloud because I remember them being I I remember I thought they were just hilarious when I was young and the next question is from Alicia at the pretty brown eye reader and she asks what has been your most rewarding booktube experience I think in general just being able to talk to other readers I think finding other readers in real life is really hard and it felt like you know in the beginning of Beauty and the Beast uh, when Belle is like walking through town and she's like singing the song and the town is singing with her and she's like I just read the most wonderful story about a beanstalk and an ogre and the guy's like that's nice That's what it was like. I would get really excited and you know books are something you want to talk about with people and you know They're made to be discussed and felt and to emotionally impact you or challenge you in some way And it's something you want to talk about but people who don't read don't want to talk about it. So it was just really difficult, I think. And, you know, I had gotten married. I had moved to a new state where, like, I didn't know anyone. And so um, it was just really great to stumble onto a community that really fostered that conversation, that kind of void in my life. Where I wanted to talk about this with people and people wanted to listen and engage in a conversation. And it has been great. The second part of her question, what has been your biggest challenge on BookTube? I would say a lot of insecurity. I am not a very articulate person. I would feel like the words in my head and what I want to say is so clear and concise in my head, but somehow on its way out of my mouth, it does not come out as eloquently as I thought it. I would say just in general, I guess, battling insecurities. And when you're editing videos, I feel like you see all of your flaws. I see all those words that I mispronounce or that I put weird emphasis on or that I say the wrong thing. And um, I think, you know, making this content and putting it out there has really uh, helped me kind of overcome that. 
and realize that, you know, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone says like stupid things once in a while. Um, but I would say the sense of community has been way greater than that. And everyone has been so awesome here. Read, create, repeat. Homeschool asks, what are your favorite children's books? Um, I did talk about Eric Carle earlier. I also really liked um, like the Wayside Storybooks and the Stinky Cheese Man. I was all about like what was funny <laughs> when I was a kid and I had really like off the wall humor. So those books I thought were just hilarious. Um, so that's another set of books I'm looking forward to eventually sharing with Henry when he can appreciate them and when he has that humor. And Rachel over at Shades of Orange asked, what are some underhyped books I think more people should read? And I do talk about these sometimes, um, but the first one is Kate Rapulia's Bellwether Rhapsody. This is about a high school band that is stuck at a hotel during a snowstorm. Um, and there is a murder going on and it's a mystery. It's just really fun and lighthearted. Um, like I would say if this was adapted, it would be very like Ryan Murphy-esque. I would say this is like a mix of Screen Queens and Glee but in the 90s mixed with The Shining <laughs> kind of is how I would describe this. It was just really, really fun. Totally loved it. And it won, I forget what the award is called, but it's like four books that are really good at reaching out to both YA and adult audiences. Um, and I could definitely see it was very accessible, but very fun and easy to read. The second one is a genre I do not read ever, but I really enjoyed this. And this is In Some Other World, maybe, uh, by Sherry Goldhagen. This is about six different teenagers who, like, on the same day, they go see a comic book movie. They're, like, in different cities, and it's kind of about how their lives all intertwine over the next couple years. It's a little bit like Love Actually. I was going to say, but not as romantic, but I don't think Love Actually is, like, that romantic. Um, but it had like that kind of a vibe to it and I really liked it. I liked how all the stories intermingled. I liked everyone's relationship to this comic book series and movie adaptation and like the role it played in their lives. So this is kind of contemporary uh, but I, I really loved it and it was really enjoyable and I don't think I've heard anyone else talk about this book. So I would really like other people to read it just um, to hear what other people think about it. It was it was really short. It was really easy to read and I thought really interesting. And then Yamini over at The Skeptical Reader asked, do you drink or eat while reading? Sometimes coffee in the mornings, but usually no because I can't multitask to save my life. Like I don't talk on the phone while I'm driving. I can't chew gum and walk. Like I cannot multitask at all to save my life. And like if I'm putting something in my mouth, it really, yeah, it distracts me from reading. What's one thing in a book that will make you immediately want to read it? And she put like in parentheses, like an author blurb or like a friend recommended it. Um, I did talk about this a little bit in my Bookish Boxes video, but I am a sucker for books about like family drama or if they're multi-generational in some way. Um, and like extra kudos if it's like Latin American on top of that, you know, like House of the Spirits, 100 Years of Solitude. Like I am a sucker for that every time. If someone's like describing a book and there's like, oh, it's multiple generations of like the blah, blah, blah family. That's immediately going on my TBR. I don't know why I love that setup so much, but I do. And I will read anything with like multi-generational in the plot, basically. Um, and then she asked, do my husband and I buddy read books? No, because we have really different tastes in books. He hates it when I read out loud to him. That's how I threaten him. Like that's a threat. If we're like laying in bed and he's like saying something, I'll be like, stop, or I'm going to read this chapter out loud to you. And he stops. Like he does not like, he gets really annoyed when I read to him and it's a book, you know, he's like not interested in, or he doesn't know who these characters are or what's going on. It just, he hates it. So, um, no, I don't read out loud to him. And no, we don't like buddy read books together because we don't like the same books.